All right, greetings guys and gals, and welcome back to Let's Play Quest for Glory 1. I'm going to start this episode with a brief interlude. I just came across a brigand while I was doing some uh, some grinding, and I think I'm ready to take him on now. Let's do this. I think I'll be strong enough to defeat a brigand for the first time. Oh, well, or maybe not. There we go. Starting to, starting to hit him a little bit. I was doing some practicing in the goblin maze, and I was really lucky. One of them had 35 silvers. Boom! There we go. First brigand defeated. I thought I would show that off. Search his body. Oh, you not you need to use that word because it doesn't exist. That's why. Search body. Search your opponent. Nine. Well, that's actually surprisingly low for a brigand. Anyway, I just thought I'd show that off. Uh, first defeat of a brigand, and I'll get back to you guys a little later after I've got some more money and my stats are a little better. Okay, we're back everybody, and I'm in the Thieves Guild again. Now I have enough money this time around. I've got 181 silver coins, so let's buy ourselves a license. Oops, license. I cannot spill today. Or ever, apparently. Welcome to the Thieves Guild Union, local 1313. I guess that's, uh, I guess a play on the fact that 13's unlucky or something like that. Um, while we're here, we can also act, uh, ask about some tools that we're going to need as a thief. We will gladly sell you a lockpick for a modest fee. However, for the true professional, nothing will do but the guild-approved Acme Thief Toolkit. Acme, of course. This kit will allow you to pick anything with a little practice and is a real steal at only 100 silvers. Just talk to Boris. Yeah, um, actually, uh, that's why I got so much money off screen, because I wanted the toolkit. Buy right, toolkit. There you are. Now we've got a toolkit and a, uh, a license. So does that mean we can play with... Um, uh, can we play Dagnabbit now with this fella? Ask about darts. Now that, now that has to be one of the stupidest things anyone's ever asked me. Um, play darts? Oh, now we can do it, okay. How much will you bet? Oh, uh, I don't know. How much? Two, I guess. Thief? That's me. Force, soft or hard? Uh, it's fairly soft. We'll angle it a little differently. And, uh, that looks good. How do I throw? Oops. Not sure what you're trying to do. Oh, maybe I click on the thing. I don't know. <laughs> there we go. Hey, that's not too bad, actually. And, oh, I guess we get to go again. All right, let me angle it a little less than that. And, uh, let's try it. Oh, that was a little off that time. Oh, it changed the position of the hand. Okay, it's good to know. That wasn't too bad. Let's see what the chief can do. He's probably a lot better than I am. Two. Four. Yeah, he's going to get this. Six. Oh, he beat me by one bloody point. Thankfully, I get to keep going, though. Let's see, maybe I, um... Yeah, the angle's fine, I think. Okay, eight. That's not bad. Um, I'll decrease the angle a little bit, because we're more in the center this time. And make it a little harder. Nice. And up it a little more. Let's try that. 14. That's not too bad. Let's see how the chief does. 9. 11. Wow, he's doing pretty good. Well, we're tied. Hmm. All right. Uh, let's try more to the left this time. Maybe I'll try a little bit softer because I've been throwing pretty hard. Okay. Um... Maybe a little more to the left. And a little harder. Nice, that's a good one. Alright, we'll try pretty much the same thing, but we'll do it inverted. Pretty good. Not too shabby. 22 points. Oh, Thief didn't even... Or the Chief didn't even get it on the board that time. Nice. You got me that time. Say, you're pretty tough. Shall we play again? Uh, not now. I just thought I'd show that off. But hey, if I'm actually pretty good at that, I probably could gamble a little more and get some more silvers. Plus, that improves my throwing skill. I guess the better your throwing skill is, the uh, the better you are at the game. If you if you couldn't tell, I, I grinded my throwing a bit in between uh, in between episodes. Fifty eight. You know, maybe. Well, nah. I could practice more with the chief if I wanted to, but uh, I don't want to risk too much. I I'm low enough on money as it is. Though I guess I could just save scum if I really wanted to. But now that we've got ourselves a thief toolkit and a thief license, I'm going to show you how to grind some of your thief skills, which are stealth and pick locks. So, um, 
you can try and pick any lock. Like, I could pick these locks here if I really wanted to. But it's not good to do them in the town, because I think the townspeople will get suspicious of you if you do that. And I think you can actually get locked out of one of the thief quests if you get caught doing it. So I don't want to risk that. Instead, I'm going to show you a safer place to practice your uh, lock picking skill, where you won't worry about getting caught. And I'll show you how to do stealth too once we're out of the town. So let's head on out. Oh, and it's daytime too. It's probably like day six now. Yeah, I did. Uh, I spent a couple days just grinding. I think I did like day five and four were just grinding days where I just uh, threw some rocks around and beat up some goblins in the goblin maze and had a good time. So now to practice your stealth. You type sneak. You're about as stealthy as the average goon. Well, at first, maybe, but if you keep practicing it a bit, we can actually sneak around. When you're sneaking, if your stealth skill is good enough, that is, you can actually uh, avoid monsters. If a monster appears on the screen, it'll bring up a message that says, like, you stealthily avoided the monster, or you hid in the bushes while the monster passed by, or something like that. And if we walk again, we'll just go back to our normal stealth. And stealth is only at 6, as you can see we still got a ways to go with that. If you want to type just sneak and walk over and over again, I think that's a quick way to um, to grind the skill. Or just staying in stealth mode, I think, for a while will be sufficient. But See, now we're at stealth for 15. I'll probably grind that more in between episodes, so you don't have to watch me do sneak walk all the time. So, As for picking locks, you can approach any locked door. The, th the healer's place is a good place to do it because... It's actually barred on the inside, as we've seen before. It says, like, the inside bolt, like, slides open or whatever. So you can pick the lock at the at the healers. Your skill is in lockpicking is insufficient to open a sardine can with a key. That's right. So if we keep going at it, though, it'll eventually... Now, now it doesn't bring up that sardine can thing, which means it's a little better. It's a little bit better. We're at 15. Still not great, though. And it uses up your stamina to do it. Once your lockpicking skill is good enough, though, after you do this a couple times, when it's about, at about like 30 or something, you can do a neat trick, which I'll show off. Um, so let me save. However, if your skill's not good enough, it can result in disaster. You can actually type pick nose, and your thief will actually shove the lockpick up his nose. You, delic you delicately insert the lockpick into your left nostril. However, if your skill isn't good enough, the Surgeon General warns. Unfortunately, you push it too far, causing yourself a cerebral hemorrhage. Guess you should have practiced on more or less difficult locks. That's right. If you do it uh, when your skill is too low, it does not <laughs> it does not work out well for you. So we're going to practice more on the thief or on the healer's um, door a little bit because I want to show off that pick nose skill. And the thing about this is practicing pick locks also improves a couple of your other skills too, like vitality and agility and stuff like that. 42, that's pretty decent. Picking locks is one of the hardest, or the easiest uh, skills to grind. Now let's try picking the nose. But before I do, I am going to save just in case I give myself another cerebral hemorrhage. And pick nose. You delicately insert the lock pick. Success! You now have an open nose. And now you can do this on any screen and you won't have to worry about being, getting caught. You can just use the, the pick nose command to practice your lockpick skill at any time. I'm going to rest a bit to recover some stamina. And what's the time? Midday. When it comes nighttime, I think I'm going to do some thieving around the town. But uh, I don't know, should I do a cut here and then come back later, or should I just practice some... <laughs> I think that the centaur would think, um, wouldn't think very highly of us if we just shoved, started shoving a lockpick up our nose in front of him. But uh, it's a pretty funny little thing you can do. It's one of the most useful Easter eggs in games I think I've ever seen. Let's see, how are we doing? 49? That could use a little bit more. Keep going. But then, success, you have an open nose. And midday. Okay, tell you what, I'll do another cut here. I'm going to grind my lockpicking and stealth skills. And I'll come back to you when I'm done grinding them up. And it's nighttime, and we can go into the town and do some thieving. So I'll see you then. All right, we're back, everybody. It's nighttime in Spielberg, and I did some grinding with my uh, thief skills to pass the rest of the day. I got pick looks up to 81 and stealth up to 53, and a lot of my other stats improved along the way as I did it. And now you'll notice my experience is above 1,000, which means we're going to start seeing some, well, <laughs> spoiler alert, the thing that happens when you reach 1,000 uh, experience or higher is tougher monsters will start appearing during the day. Monsters that would normally only appear at night now appear during the day, but that's not relevant at the moment because we're going to sneak into town. First off, we'll get into stealth mode. Let's climb the wall. We're going to do some thieving tonight. After making sure nobody is watching, you climb over the town's wall. All right. Now we got to be super quiet here. We're going to sneak around town. Our first destination, we're going to get inside the old lady's house. 
I'm gonna see what we can steal. The LOL's house, as they say back in the day, little old lady. That's the original form of LOL, actually. I'm gonna make sure we get this done in one night. We're gonna get the, uh, the little old lady's house first, which is right up here. The magic stuff. You think that's, that I would see me doing this thievery, but apparently not. Now, let's pick pick our way in. Pick lock. You hear a snick. The lock is open. Let's do this. The smell of lavender and dust fills your nose as you walk in. This reminds you of a great aunt's house you once visited. The couch looks every bit as uncomfortable as your aunt's. There's a birdcage near the stairs and a knitting basket beside the couch. All right, let's save now that we're doing some thieving. So you want to be a hero, huh? All right, let's look at the table. There's a laced oily in the center of the wooden table and a pair of silver candlesticks on either side. If those are real silver, those ought to be worth something. Let's get them. You take the silver candlesticks and stow them in your pack. Nice. What else we got here? There's a drawer over here by the looks of it. Open drawer. You find one silver in the desk drawer. You find nothing else of any value. Well, was worth a try. Looks like there's something on the couch, though. Look at couch. The little old lady left her purse on the couch. Mighty careless. Can we look in the purse? All right. Uh, let me try to search purse, perhaps. In the purse, you find 20 silvers and some soiled tankies. You take the silver. I think if we also search the couch cushions, we can find something, too. Whoops. Search couch. You find three silvers that have fallen into the cushions. Nice. Okay, let's save the game. I think that's all we really need to steal from here, but what's in this uh, basket over here? Look, basket. The knitting bag is decorated on the outside with knitted figures. The little old lady must do knitting when she's not asleep. All right, there's a cat here. Can we look at the birdcage? The birdcage is on a tall brass stand. There is a cover draped over it to keep the bird warm and quiet. The cat seems to want something. This is the point you want to pet the cat if it starts doing this. The cat really likes being petted. Ugh. Nice. Can we get this oil lamp over here? This cat's getting in the way. If you don't pet the cat, however, some tragic things can happen. And he's getting in my way a lot. Let's ignore the cat now and see what happens. Get lamp. You can't get that. Can we look at the lamp first? It's just as it appears. Yeah, I guess it's not really worth anything. On the mantel sits an ordinary hurricane lamp, which provides the only light in the room. I don't think we can actually get the birdcage. It wouldn't really worth something. The cat seems more insistent than before. Ah, we're gonna ignore it some more. Can we search under the couch? Or search not the couch, the uh, the carpet. Not sure what you're trying to do. All right, very well. You have a bad feeling about the very deep low growl emanating from the cat. And all of a sudden, it becomes a panther. <laughs> oh, he's not too bad, though. He's licking. What a cute little kitty. When the little old lady awakens to see what's going on, you have to concede her, though, through lips that are as raw as hamburger, that you've been licked. She summons the sheriff and his goon Otto. Yeah, you get caught if you don't start petting the cat. Thankfully, that's not a problem for us, though, because we uh, saved beforehand. Can we go up the stairs and see what's further on deep in the house? Uh oh. The stairs are creaking. Creak! Scrock! Oh, that's the bird, I think. The owner of the house awakens. Help, burglar, sheriff, help, kitty, kitty! <laughs> and he sneaks delicately downstairs. The LOL, kitty! Yeah, see, it actually does abbreviate it as LOL, which is pretty funny. <laughs> oh! Yeah. So, you can't go upstairs either. That's where the, uh,. The LOL is sleeping. Not a problem, though. We're done here. We've done enough thieving for one day in this house, anyway. Let's move on to the next house we got to break into. Let's get out of here. Let's make, like, a tree and get the hell out of here. Let's see. So we got a fairly decent haul from that. It's cl our climbing skill went up? Oh, from climbing the town wall. Okay, that explains it. All right. So let's go on and sneak into, the, uh, into our second location, which is quite the place. It's a bit uh, on the east side of town. Let me check our time. We want to make sure we get this all done in one night. The night is still young. Okay, we have plenty of time. I've heard rumors that if you don't do both robberies in one day, the uh, the person robbed will report it to the sheriff, and 
everyone will lock their doors tight so you can't actually get in them a second time. So you want to do them both in the same night. Um, so we're going to do them both tonight. Tragosaur. Our second location is this purple house over here, which, surprise, is the sheriff's house. We're going to actually rob the sheriff. He's got to have some valuables in there, I bet. Let's see. I'm going to sneak on inside. Pick lock. You hear a snick and the lock is open. All right, here we go. Sheriff's house time. Save. Uh, so you want to be a hero? Oh, there's my phone going off again. The people who own this house must have some money. Everything looks new and there's not a speck of dust visible. The room smells vaguely of sauerkraut and bratwurst with, with just a faint odor of smoke from pine wood. Here somewhere in the house, from somewhere in the house, you can hear someone snoring. Yeah, as if you couldn't tell by the picture, it's the sheriff. Over the mantel is a charming portrait of the sheriff and his wife. Looks like there's something on the table, too. There's an ornately carved box sitting atop the table. Can we get the box? Actually, let me show you what happens if you open the box. Gently and stealthily, you lift the lid on the little box. It's a music box. I'm gonna just listen to it for a while. It's actually for release. As the little music box begins to play, you hear the sheriff yell out, Otto, stop playing with that music box and go to bed! Nice. Boy, did you make a mistake. Uh-oh, out comes Otto. He looks a little confused. Otto, even in his sleepy state, winds the music box and closes the lid before he heads back to bed. Whew, that was close. The goon must have been so dumb or sleepy or both that he didn't even see you standing there. Nice, let's just get the box this time. We won't mess around with it anymore. You quickly toss the box into your pack. Nice. Can we search the, the sofa? Not sure what you're trying to do. Overstuffed couch. Let me try a search couch, because in the uh, LOL's house that did something. Nah, okay. Alright, let's check out the desk here. Look at desk. Looks like solid oak. You get the candle stick at the top. You're not used to. Oh, perhaps candelabra will work. Oops. Candelabra, yeah, sure. Get candelabra. And say spell it. You place the candelabra carefully in your pack beneath your cape. Can we open the desk? The de in the desk drawers, you find an assortment of mostly, mostly worthless objects, sorry, but you find three silvers, which you take. Look, desk again. Looks like solid oak. What if we try search desk? I think there's actually something secret in it. You've looked in there already. I've heard that there's a secret compartment um, in this thing. What if I type secret compartment? I don't know if that's true or not. Nah, I guess not. Alright. Um, what if we try to look under desk? I'm not gonna give up on this thing right away. Nah, nothing. Alright. Worth a shot. There is a uh, portrait over here. Can we get that jar? Get the vase. You place the vase carefully in your pack beneath your cape, and then we can I think, look at the painting as well. Uh, let's try searching it. There's always secrets behind paintings and games. Oops. Uh, move painting, try that. Whoops, not one word. <laughs> Jeez Louise, man. Here we go. By lifting the painting, you can see what certainly must be a safe hidden in the wall. Let's pick the safe. Which apparently we can do. Let's hope it's not a combination. Ah, got it. And look in the safe. You see a bag of coins. Let's get the bag. I wonder how much is in there. You take the 50 silvers and put the empty bag back in the safe. Nice. Let's close the safe, and move the picture back to where it was. You've already done that. Um, replace painting, maybe? There we go. You carefully lower the painting to its original position. Alright, I think that's all we can do here, if I'm not mistaken. I'll save. Actually, I'll save it on a different file, just in case. Um, I don't know, I'm still kind of convinced that this uh, desk has something on it. Let me try look drawers. Or open drawers, maybe. No, I guess not. Well, that's interesting. So let's goof around now that we've already saved. Um, let's try going in some of these doors. Uh-oh. <laughs> he doesn't jump over the table, apparently. 
criminal carelessness. It's hard to be a hero when you're sitting in a jail cell. The sheriff apologized for your broken arm, but he did warn you, didn't he, that Otto was only partly trained. In the future, you'll probably be more careful when you're robbing someone. Yeah. Um, so that's Otto's room, I guess, on the bottom floor. But if we go upstairs, I think that's actually where the sheriff and his wife are sleeping. So let's see what happens if we go up here. Sneak up the stairs. And go over here. I'm going to try the, uh, the eastmost door. Let's see what happens. Open door. Uh-oh. You see a pillow flying towards you, and you hear the sheriff's wife say, Screech! Apparently that's what she says. The sheriff's coming out. Oh! <laughs> An auto busts through the door. Criminal carousel again. You've never dreamt a feather pillow could have been so hard. Or was it the floor? You also didn't realize how hard it is for a thief to be a hero. The thief of Baghdad should have this kind of luck. Yeah. Showing up the different deaths. Oh, whoops, that's the wrong uh, save. Hang on. There we go. And you can also die by going to the sheriff's room, which uh, I guess I'll show off, because you get a unique little portrait for it. Well, n not a portrait, but the, the death message is kind of unique, I guess. It's kind of neat they actually programmed in a different death message for all of these different... Uh, for all the doors in this house. <laughs> Whoa! He tumbles down the stairs. Yep. Criminal curses. Now you see the hero in jail. When it comes to breaking in, it looks like the only thing broken is your head. When at, la at last you come to your senses, you find yourself in a jail cell. By the time you get out of here, you'll be too old to be a hero. So yeah. Getting caught, not a good idea. So thankfully we won't get caught. So let's get on out of here. And that's all for the robberies tonight. That's all we're going to do. But uh, we're not quite done for the night because we can now fence the stolen goods we've got at the Thieves Guild get some extra cash. We can hand in those uh, candlesticks and all that good stuff and get some cash for it. Thankfully, because um, we need the cash at this point, I've been pretty poor, which is why I resorted to thieving. And we're going to give the classic Rhine gold. Get on in. And we're going to fence some goods. And then I'll end the episode there, I think, because um, I've been doing this episode kind of in segments and then editing them together, so... It's probably going to be longer than I uh, expected it would. All right, let's fence stuff. Fence the candlesticks. Let's see now. The deuce in the guild cut and allowed for resale markup that comes to 50 silvers. There you are. Nice. You now have zero gold and 185 silver. All right, uh, let's fence the candelabra. Whoops, I, sp I, held, I spelled it wrong. Candelabra. Let's see now, they're looking the guild cut, it comes to 75 silvers, not bad. Uh, now we'll fence the music box too. Let's see now, the guild cut, 30 silver. That's pretty good for a music box. What else have we got? Do we take anything else? Oh, can we fence the vase that we got? Looking the guild cut, 40 silver. Wow, nice. We're getting a lot of coinage off of this. Uh, let's see what else. Guild license. I think that's all we stole. I think that's pretty much it. All right, that wraps up the uh, So You Want to Be a Thief episode of You Want to Be a Hero. I guess that's what I'll call it now. I kind of have to. Um, next time, let's play Quest for Glory 1. Maybe I'll get... Uh, maybe I'll finally get those... Uh, the fairy dust that I would meet to get. Maybe fight some new monsters. Now that we've passed 100... Or 1,000 experience, we got some more um, monsters ahead of us. So we'll see you then.